I'm Paul Levinson, and this is Light On, Light Through, episode 32, My Sweet Prius, part 2. Well, those of you who've been loyal listeners of Light On, Light Through from the very first episode, which was back in October 2006, may remember that I devoted that episode, and it was a short episode, I think it was about eight or nine minutes long, to my Prius and the joys of driving my Prius with Bluetooth technology, which enabled me to use my cell phone hands-free anytime I was driving in my Prius. Well, as I'm sure all of you know, the price of gas at the pump is going higher than it ever has been before. Here in the New York area, it's well over $3. And so I thought it might be time to once again take a look at my Prius and see how it is doing as far as its mileage is concerned and in general. And let me say that although, of course, I'm not happy that the price of gas is so high because even with a Prius, I still have to fill up once in a while. I've never been happier that I have a Prius than when I look at those high prices at the gas pumps. Look, the fact is, it's no fun filling up your car with gas even if the price isn't high. You know, it takes time out of your day. Uh, If it's hot, who wants to be standing there uh, at the pump with the sun beating down on your head? If it's cold, who wants to be shivering in the breeze? So, as far as I'm concerned, the fewer times I need to fill up my car, the better. And I got to say, obviously, with the Prius, I haven't had to fill up my car anywhere nearly as often as I used to fill up my other cars. Now, truthfully, I have to say that I've gotten nothing close to the 60 miles per gallon that the Prius advertises as having if everything is working perfectly. And if you look into the situation, it's not that there's anything wrong with my car. It's that the 60 miles per gallon efficiency pretty much happens only in deep city driving, when you're constantly starting and stopping for traffic. And one of the great advantages of the Prius is when the car is stopped, the gas part of the engine, the ice, as it's called, internal combustible engine, that goes off. And so you're sitting there nice and quiet just with the electrical part of the engine. But I don't live in New York City. I work in New York City at Fordham University, but I live north of New York City, and a lot of my driving is suburban driving. So rather than getting 60 miles per gallon, I get closer to 40 miles per gallon. But hey, you know what? That's still about twice as good as I got on my other cars. So I... I'm very happy with the Prius as far as that's concerned. Now, as I mentioned in my very first podcast in the Light On, Light Through series, I talked about my Bluetooth and how I enjoyed using it, and I discovered a few months after that that there's actually a very good thing that you can do with your Bluetooth technology if you like podcasts. And I not only enjoy making podcasts, I enjoy listening to podcasts. And what you can do, and there there are actually several services that have this, is you can call up a number through your Bluetooth phone and hear the podcast on your radio. And the service that I use is Podlines, spelt with a Z rather than an S, dot com. And there are other services as well. And... Let me give you the numbers of my three podcasts that you can hear just by dialing up these numbers, and you'll find many other podcasts available as well. The Light On, Light Through podcast is available at 415-223-4122. Levinson News Clips, which offers three- to five-minute reviews of major television shows, often minutes after the shows have finished airing on television, including 24, Lost, and The Sopranos, well, those reviews at Levinson News Clips are available at 415-223-4124. And I also have a third podcast, Ask Lev, at 
510-248-0382. And Ask Lev will give you three to five minutes of advice on how to make it as a writer. Where do I get my ideas for my novels? What kind of music do I listen to? How important are first paragraphs? How can you best sell your novel to a publisher? Those kinds of things. And to me, there's almost nothing cooler than driving and dialing up either one of my own podcasts or someone else's and listening to it on the radio. How cool is that? You don't have to listen to what's on the radio as far as what's being broadcast. You can actually call up and listen to a podcast that you want to listen to. Now, the only slight drawback is the only podcasts that are available, at least on my service, are the most recent podcasts. So right now, for this week, if you dial 415-223-4122, for that whole week you'll hear this podcast I'm doing right now on the Prius Part 2. And as far as Levinson News Clips is concerned, if you call uh, on Sunday night, you'll hear my podcast review of The Sopranos. But if you call late on Monday night, you'll hear my podcast review of 24. And with Ask Lev, there's usually a new podcast up about once a week. So all you get are the most recent podcasts. But again, I think it's an incredibly cool feature. So I'm very, very happy with my prayers. And if I had to mention one other thing, it has to do with the quiet quality of the car. And it's not that regular cars are so noisy necessarily. I mean, obviously, cars have mufflers. But there's something really nice, especially now that we're in the spring, beginning to move into the summer, driving through the countryside, stopping the car, and it's just totally quiet. It's just you and the world out there around you. And it's probably the first time I've ever been able to drive up very slowly to a a flock of birds, and they don't fly away because they don't hear the sound. I mean, if they see the car, I'm sure they fly away. But it's just a very different way of relating to the world, which I find very, very enjoyable. And maybe I enjoy it especially because I come from a big city where there's lots of noise. And I appreciate the peace and quiet of the, of the Prius. So I'll give you another report on my Prius in another five or six months, let you know how it's holding up. Uh, I haven't yet figured out whether or not I've saved enough money at the pump to make up for what I spent on the Prius in contrast to another car. But there's no doubt that I am saving a lot of money. And again, although I'm no happier than anyone else to see these high prices, it's no good for anyone, it's no good for any American, I certainly feel good that at least I have the Prius. And you know, there's one other advantage of having the Prius. If you have snarky Republican friends who, anytime you say anything about global warming, They sort of get all haughty and get a smirk on their face and say, well, what are you doing, you know, for global warming? You just talk the talk. Do you walk the walk? Well, I drive the car, and that makes me feel good as well. And I do think global warming is an issue, and I think that we do need to cut down on our fuel emissions. I don't know exactly how much damage any given vehicle causes, but in general, surely it's better to have less of these emissions in our atmosphere. So in addition to saving money, in addition to being able to listen to podcasts, in addition to having that nice silent mode, you also are doing something that helps the environment. The Light on Light Through podcast is proud to be part of the Blueberry Network. That's blueberry with no E's dot com. And now a word from our new sponsor, Go to My PC. Communication theorists know that there are two kinds of information that we need to thrive in this world. One kind of information comes from the mass media, newspapers, radio, television. The other is information that we ourselves may create or write. Now, you can get the information on radio and television and the Internet just about anywhere. 
So what do you do when you have some very valuable information that's on your home computer and you're out there traveling somewhere, maybe across town, across the country? Use Go to My PC and you'll discover the power and freedom of the web. Try it free right now for 30 days with unlimited access. For this special offer, just visit gotomypc.com forward slash podcast. That's gotomypc.com forward slash podcast. You are listening to a Runaway Network podcast from runawaynetwork.com. Yes, indeed, and the LightOnLightThrough.com podcast is now proud to be part of two networks, the Blueberry Network, which is sweet, and the Runaway Network, which is very edgy. And in fact, you'll find a lot of sweet and edgy stuff in the LightOnLightThrough.com podcast. Flash. And I thought with the May sweeps about to begin for television that I devote this entire Flash's section to some brief updates of some of the television shows that we've been talking about throughout this television season. First, Lost. It got off to a very rough start in the fall. I wasn't that happy with it in the early spring either. But I gotta say that the last few episodes have really brought the series back. They're finally beginning to deal with some of the underlying mysteries without adding too many new mysteries into the mix. And at this point, I think Lost may be poised to regain a lot of its former strength. 24. A lot of people are saying this isn't a great season for 24. I disagree. In general, it's been a strong season, and in particular, 24 did something I've never seen on another television show. About three quarters into Jack's worst day, they pretty much ended the main story of this season and embarked on another story. So what we've had in effect is three quarters of a season devoted to one story and the last quarter devoted to another story, which of course relates to an earlier story from a previous year. So that's very good television. I'm very happy about that. Rome. Well, season two of Rome ended. I was absolutely delighted with it. And I'm sorry there's not going to be a season three. There's certainly more than enough material for a hundred years of seasons. In any case, I think that Rome will go down as one of the best series ever to have been on television. The acting was absolutely superb. James Purefoy put in a performance as Mark Antony that was not to be believed. And although I miss the Arian Hines and his portrayal of Julius Caesar, I really didn't think the series suffered at all, in large part because of the great acting of James Purefoy and others. The Tudors began just a few weeks ago on Showtime, and that's a wonderful series as well, a very vibrant, rich tapestry. Very good performances by Jonathan Rhys Myers and others in the series. That series will likely continue for a long time, and I'm very happy about that. Heroes. Well, Heroes got off to a good start. I thought it got bogged down in a lot of trivia in the fall. It came back very strong in February, and now I think it's poised for some great shows in May. The show they had last week was really wonderful, and in particular, I like what they did with Mr. Bennett. But all in all, an excellent series. It's really the one shining light of NBC in an otherwise very dismal year. And last but not least, The Sopranos is finishing up its long run. It's now, as of this minute, shown three of the final nine episodes. And the show is taking its time in this wind-up. 
almost lovingly lingering on every character. So I'm very much looking forward to the next and last, unfortunately, six episodes of The Sopranos. Promo. Hey, you know what that is, our promo suite. And first and foremost, as always, you'll hear a promo for the MikeThinks.com podcast. Strap on those headphones. Mike has a great podcast. I just heard it. He recorded it yesterday on Friday. And he has a piece about the FCC. And guess what? The FCC is moving ahead as swiftly and strongly as it can, trying to crack down on television violence. And as you know, Mike and I strongly support the First Amendment. We don't think it's a good idea for the government to regulate what we see and hear on television. And incidentally, over on paullevinson.net, you'll find a blog post that I wrote. One of the things that really infuriated me about this is the FCC claims in its report that there is really good hard evidence that shows that watching violent things on television creates violence in the real world. You know what? That evidence is about as good as the evidence for the weapons of mass destruction in Iraq that led us to go to war against that country. So this is a serious thing. It's another example of our government trampling on the First Amendment, disregarding the Constitution. And to make matters worse, the FCC is citing non-existent evidence. So listen to the MikeThinks.com podcast. You'll get his take on that. And then if you have a chance, go over to PaulLevinson.net. By the way, the TV shows that I was just talking about, I also have reviews of those shows on another one of my blogs, Paul Levinson's Infinite Regress is the name of that blog. And you can read my posts there at PaulLevinson.blogspot.com. Com. Boy, what a promo suite this is. I'm promoting my stuff more than anybody else's. So again, make sure you listen to MikeThinks.com. You'll also hear a promo for Sean Farrell, who's continuing with his patio book of my novel, The Silk Code. That's over on PatioBooks.com. And you'll hear several other nice promos as well. Listen, I had a great time talking to you today, as always. I look forward to talking to you again next week. In the meantime, sit back, relax, and enjoy. out the Mike Thinks podcast, www.mikethinks.com. News and current events with an opinion. The Mike Thinks podcast. It's the news you missed. www.mikethinks.com. The Locus award-winning novel by Paul Levinson comes to life in this free podcast novel. Journey into the ancient world. Witness the wonder of ages past and join Phil D'Amato in a struggle against forces both ruthless and unseen. Visit www.thesilkcode.blogspot.com to learn more about the author and the novel. And subscribe today at patiobooks.com. Join the battle, witness the wonder, or forever be victim to the awe and power of the Silk Code. Phil D'Amato is ready. Are you? Punk Horror Podcast, coming to you every other week from Punk Horror Press, featuring The Punk and the Pastor, a movie review show featuring David Giannis and Stacey Campbell, and author Red Fiction, featuring the best in horror and punk fiction. Don't miss it. Subscribe now at www.punkhorror.com.